1945. The Second World War, a war that has profoundly shaken the whole world, has ended today. It has been declared as the bloodiest and most painful war in history. The war which has brought the most painful losses in the history of humanity. In 61 countries, 1,700,000,000 people, that is, virtually three out of four people have been affected by this war. 110 million people have been left homeless. The number of people who have died has been estimated at 25 million soldiers, with 30 million civilians having been lost, giving us a total of 55 million. This war, known as the Second World War, has been more costly than any other war. The money spent on the war has been estimated at being more than one trillion dollars. We must pause to ask this question here. What would happen if we use this money and all work together to ensure that people would no longer suffer from poverty or hunger on this earth? Is the only thing humanity knows how to destroy and kill? Is it not possible that we could form a community to defend peace and positive thoughts on Earth? Would it not be possible for us to take constructive and positive steps that include all of humanity? Maybe it was these questions that were racing around in the mind of this shepherd boy as he took his sheep out to graze on this plateau in eastern Turkey in the 1940s. Every child dreams, but only gifted children are brave enough to pursue their dreams. The child on the plateau of Ezurum was not an ordinary child. He loved to read and to think. These were the things most important to him. His teachers also noticed that he was different from the other children. To pursue great dreams means coming face to face with great difficulties and surmounting enormous rocky hills. Fetula Gülen's life is woven from problems and strife because he was deprived of the vast opportunities offered by a good education during his childhood. He redoubled his efforts to attain the education he desired, gaining it from within his family and surroundings. Considering the time and the place in which he lived, the effort that he spent to gain knowledge and education is beyond our comprehension. Gulen, who chose a simple life, distancing himself from luxury, developed his intellect, creating new ideas which have gone on to be an inspiration for many people today. All over the world, there are educational institutions that have been developed along his ideas of educational method founded by those inspired by his ideas. Such institutions can only strengthen the hopes for the establishment of permanent peace throughout the world. Gulen is first and foremost an intellectual. His speeches and the ideas expressed in his books cover a period of 40 years. Such works have attracted remarkable interest, both in Turkey and abroad as they present ideals that can readily be brought into reality. Private businesses that have been affected by ideals that are practical and connected to life, rather than fantastic dreams impossible to apply to real life, have established schools, not only in every city in Turkey, but also in every part of the world.
Today, we can see the graduates of these institutions coming from different regions of the world, having grown up in different cultures, yet still having an astounding concordance and unity, working in a leadership of wisdom and science in these schools throughout the world. These students are a silent evidence of how to live together peacefully, without taking into account the color of one's skin or personal ideas or beliefs. The idea around which the children of different nations gather is the concept of dialogue and tolerance. This is the theme with which Fetula Gulin has given much importance over the years. The ideal of dialogue and tolerance strikes those people who visit the schools, wherever in the world they may be. If the idea of dialogue and tolerance among cultures has been put forward by idealists, then those who are eager to nurture this tolerance and dialogue, those who are looking for the lost paradise, are then realists. We can rest assured that dialogue among civilizations and peace in the world are no longer a dream. As an intellectual, Fetula Gulen has been a source of inspiration for organizations in which different people from different political and cultural backgrounds have gathered together in a warm embrace. This phenomena began to occur in the 1990s. As an authority in Islam, he invited the authorities of other religions to meetings that were set up within the mosaic of the religions that stretch over the history of time. He stretched out his hand with love, and he was not ignored. Pope John Paul II, the Chief Rabbi, Eli Yahu Bakshi Doram, and Patriarch Bartholomeos have been of those who have declared that Paradise Lost is known as Peace on Earth. Together they have all opposed the thesis of the clash of civilizations. Today, not only are religious authorities giving support to the message of Fetula Gulen, also scientists and intellectuals living in various parts of the world have backed his call. Because his ideas for peace for the world are moderate and reasonable, they have begun to be debated in intellectual settings throughout the world, saving them from remaining mere words and taking them beyond mere organizations. Today, in schools in different regions of the world, world peace is alive because of these ideas. So what is Gulen's message that affects so many people to such a great extent? What does he talk about and what makes those around him embrace his message? He has many brief sayings applying to both individuals and for society. Here are some examples. People should act as a prosecuting lawyer for their own bad behavior and a defense lawyer for the mistakes of others. Open your hearts as wide as possible. Let them become oceans. Love humanity and renew with faith. Become closer to every heart. Do not permit any heart to be gloomy or distant. Treating love with love and enmity with enmity is the most distinguishing characteristic of a heart that is overflowing with faith. Hating everyone means that Satan has grasped one's heart. Love humanity. Admire humanity. There are no limits to one's usefulness to others. An individual whose aim is great should be altruistic enough to sacrifice their soul for others. However, virtue depends on one's being intimate, generous, pure of intention, and removed from racial and national fanaticism. Nations whose youth have been well-educated are candidates for improvement. On the other hand, the decline of those nations which disregard youth is inevitable. Those who attempt to heal the world should first heal themselves. Indeed, it is not until they have purified their inner world from hatred, jealousy, and shame that they can become model for others. Would it be possible to achieve great goals if people did not have dreams so large that they included the whole world? Making fantastic strides is what those who achieve great goals have in common, is it not? A trivial step is in actual fact not a step taken on behalf of peace in the world, 
dialogue and tolerance, is it? What befits humanity is not fighting, struggling, and filling the world with problems and chaos, is it? The thing we have learned and what we will transmit to future generations should not be the clash of civilizations, should it? Whereas, are we not, as humanity, the children who have dared to dream great dreams, to follow our dreams until the end? Does the loss of our dreams and subsequently the entire world mean that we have become a grown-up? <laughs>